Hello everyone and welcome to this Ultra HD 4K Blu-ray review of Lee Cronin's Evil Dead Rise. I'm not a big fan of the genre and even less of this franchise. I know there are a lot of hardcore fans of these films and especially of their creator Sam Raimi. Indeed, the Evil Dead adventure began in 1981 with a film that became a cult hit and has two sequels, a musical and a series and a super reboot by Fede Alvarez in 2013. Lee Cronin's film is in a class of its own. Neither a sequel nor a remake, just a foray into the universe. Not being fan of this kind of relatively gory and violent film, I was attracted by the original aspect of the mother of a family possessed by a demon who attacks her children. I won't say I had a good time, because I had the good idea of watching it alone in the dark at 1am in Dolby Atmos. Obviously, for those who watch this kind of film all the time or with friends, this may seem not so scary, but as far as I'm concerned, I simply liquefied in my sofa. I'm not in the habit of blowing my own horn, but frankly, as a defender of the physical medium, I don't see how anyone can justify spending $13 on a disc like this. Seriously, zero interactivity. Not a single bonus or trailer. Absolute nothingness. The menu, a still image, it's a shame. There's obviously another edition with a director's commentary and a short film. This is supposed to be a premium product given the price, and there's so much to show for this kind of film, between the incredible makeup, the set effects, the VFX and all the post-production. It's really frustrating, but maybe one day we'll get a more complete edition. The film was shot with Alexa Mini LF cameras and anamorphic lenses. The ratio is 239 to 1 and it was finalized in 4K. This edition contains two discs, one with the SDR version and one with the 4K UHD version in HDR tape. This is a dark film, with the exception of the intro, which takes place exclusively indoors at night. Cinematographer Dave Garbett and colorist Gary Curran have done a superb job. Despite the lack of light, the image is very pleasant and the color grading is quite natural, with cyan and orange and greenish dominance once again. The difference between HDR and SDR is not immediately obvious for the simple reason that in terms of colorimetry, most of the colors used are in Rec. 709 range. There are a few bluish tones in HDR that won't be visible in SDR, but these remain marginal. The backgrounds are dotted with light sources such as candles and garlands, which create highlights and enhance the image's dynamic range. But they are rather discreet, and even if they appear mostly flattened in SDR version, we can't say that the difference with HDR is phenomenal. There are some fairly high luminous peaks, but the average luminance of the image remains very low. The HDR version fares better, however, thanks to all the nuances in the dark areas that it manages to render, whereas the SDR version will be much more restricted. What's more, the 10 bit encoding, with an average of 67 megabits per second, delivers a better image than the HD Blu ray. Some close ups, which unfortunately I can't show you here, are quite rich in detail. But here again, we are not talking about a surgical level of sharpness. Ok, so now I know what you are thinking. Non-existent interaction, beautiful image but not the HDR film of the year, but why do a test then? Well, for the soundtrack folks. I'm not going to beat around the bush. The Atmos track in this film has titanized me. I'm not sure I would do it again in the middle of the night on my own right now. The Altitude Object Viewer of the Altitude 32 processor from Trinov didn't know which way to turn, there were so many objects in every direction. Until now, most of the films I've tested have been blockbusters, with soundtracks bursting with explosions and gunfire. But here we are in a completely different register. The tension conveyed by the sound in this film is incredible. The sound design work in this sequence with the old vinyls made my blood run cold. Watching this film on the TV is one thing, but watching it in Dolby Atmos with the incantations all around you, the demons screaming and the whole arsenal of sound effects unfolding and assaulting your ears relentlessly, it's exhausting. I know some people would tell me they've seen much worse and I have no problem believing you, I was traumatized by The Exorcist. We are obviously not in the same level here, but the sound team's work provides an incredible immersive experience that made me jump and feel overwhelmed a good number of times. The subwoofer in this earthquake sequence is very much in demand. As for the rear speakers and the sailing, they are used almost constantly. Whether it's normal scenes with simple ambiences or action scenes, the entire space is used. 
there is also a lot of work done on voices variations. As you can see, this film deserves a much better edition, but it's still worth the detour. Nick Ronin puts a wicked show with some scary scenes and Alyssa Sutherland is absolutely terrifying. For the record, this is the US version with a French Parisian 5.1 track. The French edition should contain an Atmos French track. I hope you enjoyed this test. Don't hesitate to subscribe, like and share. See you soon. Take care. Bye.